Hello YouTube! Sharps1874 here and today we've got a reloading video on the 5.7 by 28 caliber. Um, it's new to me. I've never reloaded this before and what you're going to see is my very first attempt at reloading this caliber. I've heard do's and don'ts. Uh, some people say don't reload it because there's a special varnish on it. Other people said oh yeah We've tried it, but um, you're going to see me try it today um, to give you a little bit of an idea about the size of this. For those of you who don't know, compare that to the bullet that I put in my 338 Lapua. This is a little itty bitty round, and um, to get brass, I had to go and shoot 20 of these so I'd get the brass so I could bring it home, so I could reload it, so I could make this video. It was kind of interesting. Now, you're going to see me, like I said, for the very first time reloading this. I did not practice and then do it. This is all my first attempt at everything, at uh, sizing, um, seating the bullets, add, adding the powder. And at the end, um, I'm going to tell you some of the things that I learned about this. Uh, now, so everyone knows, like we've said on many videos before, when you reload, make sure you follow all the safety precautions. Everyone has their own way of doing things, but we must be safe when we reload. All right. Um, I may not do things exactly the way you do them, Feel free to uh, share constructive criticism in the comments below and um, I'll read them and I'll get back to you if I can. But first, let's go out to the range, shoot some of these so I can reload them. I did not see where that one went. I thought it hit, I heard it hit the car. Yeah. Okay, stand over there. Okay. Okay, um, full disclosure, I am not a pistol guy. I mean, I'm getting better at it, but I'm, I'm much, much better with iron sights and or a scope on a rifle. And um, you've probably heard me say this before, but um, I was able to get 20 pieces of brass. And so we're going to start the reloading process. Okay, step number one, we need to put them through the tumbler. Okay, here's my tumbler. This is, uh, this has the walnut shell. There's the 20 brass. Turn this bad boy on. Go for about an hour. Okay, I got the uh, the brass out of the tumbler. I've been wiped them off, cleaned them up, and inspected them. And as you can see, they're all good, with the exception of there's a few dings in these up here. That doesn't mean they're bad. 
let's uh, let's fix that. Let me readjust the camera. Okay, so I'm going to take this one, which was pretty dinged, and if you just put some needle nose pliers in there and just gently roll it around, you can get it good enough that it will start inside your press. So I'm going to do that to all of these. Okay, now we're ready to size and lubricate, <coughs> or actually lubricate and size. Okay, just going to put a little bit on. And I found it very helpful just to use a putty knife to spread it around. And then I go the opposite direction. So we get lube everywhere we need it. <clears throat> now I should say that I've already set my die, my sizing die. And so we it is set so just has a little bit of a over center clunk when we get to the top. I'm going to readjust so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so my sizing die is set up. It's locked with a locking collar. I prefer those over the nuts, the jam nuts that come with the, the dies. I'm putting a little bit of lube on this, just this one. Because I've never done this before, I, I'm interested to see what happens. And here we go. Ooh, that's tight. That is really tight. I think we're going to put a little bit more lube on there. Okay, the primer just came out. That's a good thing. Oh, I need to get my uh, primer catcher. really tight. One more time to see if we can get it all the way up in there. We did. All right, that looks good. Let's check the manual says 1.135 and this is 1.15 so 15 thousandths over. Okay so now we're going to do we're going to do five at a time.
they're just a little bit gummed up in there. So we'll fix that. Okay, so to, to clean out the primer pockets, I have this cute little uh, tool, and it's got sizes for rifle and pistol and multiple tips that can come on this end. This is a Lyman product. Just to make this easier, I'm going to separate these out. And then it's just a matter of going down in. Okay, these are now ready for primers. I have blown out the cavities in case there's any uh, brass shavings in there. Um, they're all set to go and um, <clears throat> do a final check on one one four one one four. One one five. Okay, so I had four that were really quite oversized. Let me show you the book. Okay, so this is Lyman forty ninth edition. We have 57 by 28 FN, which is what we're reloading. And you can see, oh, where's my pointy stick? To the edge of the case, it should be 135, and to the neck, it should be 954. Okay, I've just got my uh, trimming tools set up, and let's take a measurement and see if I got close. Well, it looks like we can go just a smidge more. Back that out and lock it down and we'll give this another try. Oh, that is just taking off error such a small amount. And survey says. 138. That's good enough for me. Okay, now after we trim them, we give them just a quick deeper on the inside and a quick deeper on the outside.
And that one I've already done. All right. So now we're ready for powder and bullets. Okay, I'm changing out my primer holder. I found it was easier just to set up, have a brand new setup. The recipe calls for small rifle primers. And so, that's what we're going to put in. And yes, I could know I could do this all in one step, but then I wouldn't be able to clean out the primer pockets. So I prefer to do it this way. And then, as one last final check, I will check and make sure that these are all flush. They're sitting where they're supposed to, which they are. So now we can go to primer. And according to the manual, well, Let's zoom out. All I could get, all I could find in the store was number seven. And and I did get some 40 grain VMAX. 40 grain VMAX with number seven. 6.3 to 7.0. Well, we're going to start at 6.3. So I'll get set up for that. And uh, we'll be back in just a minute. Uh, the manual says uh, 6.3 is the minimum charge. So I've got my scale set up for 6.3. We're um, going to turn on our electronic scale. We'll now Tear it out and we'll put in a charge, and that comes up to 5.9. All right, the, the uh, bushing that goes inside here, I didn't have one to exactly for 6.3, so now we're going to go back up to the uh, and, and do some trickle charge. Settle down, settle down, big boy. And we'll just keep putting in bits. And there we are, 6.1, that was a little bit better. Yeah, a little loose. If I had the right bushing and I was off by a tenth of a grain, I wouldn't worry about it, but this is off by much more than that. One last double check that I do is I will now look into each cartridge and make sure that 
there's gunpowder in there. Don't want to have an issue with that. All right, now let's uh, set up on the press. Okay, so as I was explaining before, I took a factory round and set my um, stop up here. So it would be the uh, exactly the same. And then I checked overall length with my digital ca uh, caliper and uh, did this first one. Now we'll do the rest of them. Okay, there is the last one, and now let's go see if they work. I don't know. All right, you saw it. We reloaded 20 and took the 20 out to the range, fired them. We had no misfeeds, no misfires. Everything worked perfectly. It was a pain in the butt to go looking for the brass. Um, we ended up only finding 19 out of the 20. We searched everywhere and we couldn't find the 20th. But there are some lessons that I learned from reloading the 5.7 by 28. Uh, the first one is this funnel with this powder does not work. It just does not work. But it, this number seven is is a very, very, very fine powder. The particulate size is, is um, s smaller than salt. It's just really tiny. And it would, um, if, if I didn't line my funnel up exactly, I had issues. So I uh, got a new Lyman funnel set and um, this one has one set up for 22 and this works perfectly. It, uh, it's, it This is going to be a treat to put powder in. Um, this one also static kept the, the, uh, the fine powder on the sides. There won't be a static issue on this. Next lesson, um, these do take, they like a lot of lube. Now I don't lube the necks because I've had problems with 223 brass um, buckling on the necks if you get too much uh, lubricant on the neck. So I just lubricated the body. That worked pretty good. The, the first one or two I took very, very carefully because I've had brass stick in my die before and that's a pain in the butt to get out. Um, but if I put a sufficient amount of lube on, they worked really well and um, um, I had no issues. Um, so the, the entire process of reloading 5.7 by 28 is relatively straightforward. So, um, you can reload 5.7 by 28. I found it to be fun, like all of my re reloading, all the different calibers I reload. I really enjoy it. I'd put music on in the background, but the YouTube police would have my butt, so I can't do that. But anyway, if you um, like 5.7 by 28, try to reload it. In any case, 
I'm Sharps1874, and I thought you'd like to know.